California is blessed by beautiful streams and rivers that run from the Sierra Nevada mountains down into the San Joaquin Valley. I do quite a bit of fishing and there was a time when you came onto the stream almost all, everyone you saw was a fisherman. More and more we're seeing people uh, testing the water for pesticide residues in the stream. This is a problem that many farmers are trying to deal with and they're dealing with that by the use of a sprayer that only comes on when there's a target. This is sometimes called a smart sprayer. In the, for instance, in an orchard crop, in a gap between trees, the sprayer does not turn on, only when there's a target present. This lessens the amount of pesticide that goes off site onto the soil and potentially running off that soil into the river. You can look at this piece of equipment, it looks like any conventional ground sprayer that is used by, has been used by agriculture for the last 60 years. But this one incorporates something new. As you might guess, part of that is a computer. The computer coordinates two important aspects of this machine. One is a high frequency sound wave that's located at the front of the sprayer the direct sound to a target. In this case, it will be the tree. The tree could have leaves or it could be without leaves. When it hits the tree, the sound wave hits the tree, it automatically coordinates based on the speed of the tractor when the sprayer will come on to hit the particular target that the sound wave hit. And that's really the basics of this particular piece of machinery. Sound wave to detect the target, when you pass the target based on the speed you're going, it then triggers the sprayer to come on to hit that target. When there is no target there, in other words, there's a space between the trees, then the sprayer no longer operates. This has a, a lot of benefit in terms of uh, reducing the amount of spray that is off target, but it also doesn't lessen the efficacy of the uh, uh, control technique. You're still able to get the proper amount of spray onto the tree while not using it when it when the sprayer passes uh, between gaps in trees. Okay, what you see here are the ultrasonic sound sensors that send out the high-pitched sound that reaches the target. These sound sensors are linked to a computer that's also linked to the nozzles at the rear of the machine and based on the computer generated program there's a coordination between where the sound is generated and when the spray nozzles come on. What this allows us to do is to shut the sprayer off automatically as you have no target. In spaces between trees no spray is deposited until there is a target there. The top sound sensor controls the top two nozzles on the back of the sprayer the middle one, the middle two nozzles, and the bottom one, the bottom two nozzles. Again, we have the same setup on each side, so as you drive through the alley, you're able to detect targets or the lack of targets on each side of the sprayer, and that coordinates with the nozzles in the back to either shut them off when there is no target or to turn them on when there is a target. The result of this is a tremendous savings and to the farmer and the amount of material that's sprayed per acre to the environment because nothing is triggered when there is no target present. And third, it does not reduce the efficacy of chemical control because you are depositing the same amount of uh, product that you would with a conventional sprayer that has the machine running the whole time while you're driving through the orchard but only in this case comes on when the target is present. This is a very important piece of equipment. This is the tractor mounted controller that you program to tell the computer how to coordinate between the sound generation, the sound waves going out, and when the nozzles come on. On this piece of equipment, you will enter the speed that you're going to drive. You can enter the tree spacings between trees within the row and also the space of trees between rows. Once you do that, it triggers the computer to program that and if you're driving at the correct speed, that's all the driver has to do. It eliminates the need of a driver actually operating the on-off valves himself based on 
coordination of speed, tree spacing, and row spacing. So this is really important. It also gives you information as uh, total acres sprayed, the amount of chemical sprayed per acre, the amount saved compared to what you would use with a full coverage spray. In other words, we call it the smart sprayer being off. Some people term that the dumb sprayer, but it is called the smart sprayer being off and it allows you to determine how much spray you're actually saving without reducing the amount of material that goes onto the tree. And this is mounted right up on the tractor itself. It's a very important piece of equipment. Okay, right now we're looking at the engine of the sprayer and also the area where the pump distributes the spray to the nozzles themselves. It's a really important part of this and the, that's what's known as the solenoids that control a specific number of nozzles here. These solenoids are triggered, they're coordinated with the sound sensor. So when the sound sensor sends out uh, emits a sound and hits a target, the solenoid opens and allows water and material to run to the specific nozzles uh, that are aimed at where that target is. So these are very, very important. You can see on each side there's three sets of solenoids that uh, control a certain number of, of nozzles. These have to be working properly and uh, it's really important that the operator uh, is aware that the correct nozzles are coming on when that solenoid opens up. Okay, whether you're talking about a conventional sprayer or a smart sprayer, the mechanics of the air movement is the same. This is an important part of a sprayer, whether it's conventional or a smart sprayer, in that it takes air in and creates a high velocity. This is the air fan. It pulls the air in from the back, the fan turns, and creates a great deal of wind pressure that is then distributed out to where the uh, chemical is released from these nozzles. This is known as an air carrier or an air blast sprayer. Uh, two terms are interchangeable. The air comes in, forced out to here at high speeds where the chemical is released from the nozzle and then the chemical is carried by the air out. Okay, now we've talked about the importance of moving air from outside into this column to carry a, a force of air in, into the sprayer that then carries the um, chemical up into the tree. We've talked that the fan, the size of the fan is very important, the angle of the blades are very important, the size of the of the blades, essentially the fan, how fast it's turning. Now there's one other, uh, one other component of this and that's the length of this tube. You're taking air from the outside where it's not compressed and putting it into a tube here. The longer that tube is, the more compressed and the faster that air moves. That's a really important concept in getting enough force with the air to move the chemical from the nozzles up into the tree. The higher the tree, the more air force you need to get up high. For instance, in, uh, in this crop, peaches, this size tunnel is, is uh, very effective. But if uh, you were dealing with a crop such as walnuts or pecans, where you have to get 25 to 30, 35 feet up into the tree, you're gonna need bigger fans, you're gonna be uh, blades, and you're also gonna need a longer tube just to constrict that air movement, create greater force to carry it up into the tree.